everybody speaking to you from a new location today i left you yesterday as i was getting back from my walk to rosilli so i had a really calm quiet evening i watched um, a bit of a drama called the pact that i downloaded on my fire tablet um, it was on the bbc iplayer and i enjoyed that and i also downloaded a film i have a prime Amazon Prime account and I downloaded a film before I came away called The Danish Girl and I really enjoyed that, really good and uh, yeah, turned in quite early I woke up about 2 o'clock, it did rain quite a bit in the night but I slept well anyway, woke up this morning, had my coffee and then packed up, which doesn't take long when you're in a camper van it is lovely, um, watching all the people in their tents you know, it does look quite hard work and brings back a lot of memories for me um, but yeah, packed up, I took the chocks away basically turned off the gas, cleared up my rubbish and, uh, and drove off so I have come, I googled it yesterday I am on a mission today, as I probably said yesterday I'm on a mission to see Whitefoot Lighthouse. A um, couple of nights ago I tried to walk from the campsite which took many, well probably about three hours there, three hours back and then I misjudged the times, the tide times so I ended up not seeing the lighthouse at all, it was just a little speck in the distance. I'm not sure what happened there, I thought I'd looked at the tide times but I'd obviously got it the wrong way round. Anyway, low tide today is one o'clock. It is now just after 10 o'clock in the morning. And I can walk to the lighthouse from this car park. It's a gorgeous car park and it's a community. It's a field it is. So a farmer obviously lets out his field as a car park. You can't stay here overnight. There's signs clearly saying that. But there's an honesty box here and you pay one pound for all day and um, beautiful quiet location a couple of cars here haven't really seen anyone at the moment but it's in the village of Llan Madoc. so my plan today is gonna sit down having my shake yes I'm having meal replacements while I'm away this time um, a because I didn't really want to do much cooking and B I want to get rid of a bit of a timber so I'm trying to have a bit of a fast and this is day three I'm planning on having dinner when I get home tonight in fact there's a community shop here which sells local vegetables so I'm going to have a little look at that before I leave hopefully get some nice veg for tonight um, but anyway all that's to look forward to and meanwhile my mission to find this lighthouse continues I'm going to sit here for a little bit chill out, pack up and uh, get back on the Wales Coast path and find this lighthouse. I visualised all yesterday that today was going to be dry. I'd even get a little bit of sun and the tide would be right. So I don't think there's any sun, <laughs> but there's no rain. And hopefully the tide will be out and cross and everything. Wish me luck. <laughs> While I'm sitting here, I thought I'd mention a couple of books that have been on my bookshelf for this trip. I've got some books that stay there forever. Um, I've talked about a couple of them before, but um, I always have this one. It's my Bradshaw's book, just in case I stay somewhere that's got a railway. I love Michael Portillo and his railway journeys. So Richard bought me this a couple of years ago, so it always stays in the van. I just love reading all the uh, comments that they made all those years ago. Um, but I have bought a few different ones with me for this trip. A couple from the library. Two on the Wales Coast Path. This is one. This is from the library and it's um, sort of a, a smaller book and it's from the Ten Beta Swansea. But as I'm doing sections on that path, I brought this one as a guide. It's a little bit of background on the history and little tips of um, where to park camp etc. Um, also have my own copy, this one has accompanied me when I did the North Wales coast path and yes I, I use this as my as my bible while I'm doing the Wales coast path. I was in a shop called The Works, um, sort of a discount booksellers 
and I picked up this, it was £1.50 and I absolutely love it. It's by a lady called Claire Gogarty and it's all about sort of walking and sort of pilgrimages and how you can benefit from doing modern day pilgrimages. They don't have to be long but even just walks through forest and it's a bit woo woo but I do like it and I'm going to try and embrace more woo woo. I seem to have got a bit of a theme going on with walking at the moment because I picked up this in the library as well. It was on um, on this way on the bookshelf and it kind of sang out to me and it's a brilliant book. Um, it's by Andrew Forstoffel, um, American boy, um, written in 2012 I think it is and he was just out of college and trying to find himself so he walks across America speaking to people. The book's called Walking to Listen and it sort of chronicles his journey and the types of people he spoke to on the way and yeah it's really enlightening. I haven't finished it yet so I can't tell you how, uh, how it all ends up but uh, I'm inspired by these people who just set off on these huge walks. There's another lady called Ursula Martin uh, she got a book out, which I read a couple of years ago, it's called One Woman Walks Wales. Um, but I follow her on Facebook and Instagram and she's just called One Woman Walks and she is inspirational. She's just come back to Wales. She left two years ago, I want to say, um, went to the Ukraine and she has walked back across the U Ukraine even during a pandemic, she's had, um, she's wild camped a lot of the times through the whole winter and I feel like my walks can be uncomfortable sometimes, but these people kind of put my little efforts into perspective. Final one on the walks, I read this, I bought this last summer, I think it was, Raina Wynn, The Salt Path, again, such an inspirational story, a husband and wife. Um, her husband's been diagnosed with um, life-limiting illness. They, they hit many problems and they basically take off and walk the southwest coast path while camping along the way with very little money. And yeah, really lovely, lovely book. And if you're kind of thinking of having a walk or doing a coast path walk, it's, it's lovely. I think of them both often when I'm doing my little coast path walks. And then if you're interested in van life, living in your van or traveling long term in your van, this is great. I follow this guy on Instagram and I used to read his blog years ago. He's called Van Dog Traveller. And um, this is how to live in a van and travel. I bought it on Amazon. Uh, it's a nice, neat little book. And yeah, I've read his previous one. I think I bought the ebook version of how to uh, do a DIY conversion. He's got a Mercedes Sprinter that's rusty as hell. Um, but he's just travelled all the way across Europe, had some amazing adventures, and I just love reading him. I don't think I'll ever do that. But I just bought this book because I thought it would be an interesting read, and it is. It is quite inspirational. So yeah, if you're interested in van life, then I would definitely recommend that one. Right, I went up to the community shop and I bought some Gower early potatoes and some broccoli for tea tonight because I'm going to eat tonight. Hopefully they'll be nice. Gower potatoes, new potatoes are generally lovely. A meal on their own with a bit of butter. And um, I've got my bag packed, walking shoes on. There's a bit of blue sky up there. <laughs> Let's go bag me a lighthouse. Drown to deep, no strength to fight. My guy's so good, there may go
Well, it was all worth it. The long walk where I was wondering if I was ever going to see the sea and the 14 miles the other day when I made a mistake with the tide times and a half hour walk over all of these um, pebbles and shells. <laughs> I got up to it and I managed to get the drone up. So I'm, I'm really happy, really happy. Also standing here, it's a good opportunity to look at where I've walked on the coast path. Um, I've done a previous story on my walk from Burryport to Gowerton and just across the Lacha estuary, that is where I started my walk at Burryport and there's another lighthouse over there and it's ridiculous. <laughs> I walked all the way along here then over to Lacha and then across to Gowerton and obviously I've still got all of this bit still to do but yes mission accomplished today I have got footage of the lighthouse I'm hoping it's turned out okay on the drone anyway oh that would be getting wouldn't it <laughs> back to the van I'm back in the van I'm so happy I saw the lighthouse I'm so happy I managed to walk out to it and I'm so happy I managed to get the drone up. I've just checked the footage and I think I've got some nice shots in there. And uh, it was lovely that uh, I was the first one out to the lighthouse, apart from the men who were in um, pickups. I don't know whether they were fishermen um, or environmental people, but they were there in their pickup trucks. And then uh, just as I got my drone down, more people started walking across. So yes, it all went well. I, I honestly believe visualizing works because yesterday I spent quite a bit of time visualising me getting to the White House, getting the drone up safely and not being crowded and a bit of sun. So it wasn't awfully sunny, but it was a bit of sun and quite a good atmosphere to go with the um, gothic look of the lighthouse. So yeah, another good um, four mile walk today. Um, so I'm feeling quite invigorated. My face is definitely feeling a little bit sunburned. I think my hair is looking a bit uh, straggly as well, so apologies for how I look today. But I am going to head home now. I've got my uh, Gower new potatoes here. I'm going to take it home. I'm going to have steak for tea tonight. So go and see uh, all the family I'm at home and Teddy, of course. Uh, but it's been a lovely couple of days, it really has. So highly recommend the Gower and I was at Hillend campsite which is in just outside Llangeneth which was really lovely and this park up is about a quarter of an hour away it's in a little hamlet called Clanmadoc and there is a lovely pub here just drove past it called the Britannia that looks quite nice so I'm gonna head home and uh, I will see you next week bye